Imagine, this thing can replace all of those things. iPhone 13 Pro Max comparison in terms of stills with the Nikon D780 full frame camera with three f2.8 lenses. Let's go. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, you're watching No Limits On channel from Russia with love and today I'm comparing the 13 Pro Max with the Nikon D780 but last year I've compared the 12 Pro Max with the D780 as well, you can see this video right here or in the description below. So why am I comparing the prosumer phone with the professional full frame camera because a lot of people are thinking about taking such camera to their trips or vacation or to a small photo shoot instead of this or maybe this instead of this so let's compare the picture quality most of the time in jpegs and baked in look in the iphone but then we'll compare raws as well let's go Let's start off with this lens. It's 17 to 35 f 2.8 lens, which is a pretty heavy and expensive lens, of course, guys. And you can straight away see that at 17 millimeters, it's not that wide as 13 millimeters on the iPhone, as well as the dynamic range in JPEGs is lower. And we definitely cannot see the sky right there. But on the iPhone, we can see the sky thanks to computational photography and combining different exposures and pictures. Also, we can see that the picture with the Nikon is a little bit vignette -y. We can see the vignette in the corners, but on the next picture with f4 aperture, we can now see that this vignette goes away. And overall sharpness is a little better on the Nikon. Of course, it's a 24 megapixel camera comparing to the 12 megapixels on the iPhone. But overall, pretty comparable shots in my opinion. Then we go to the minimal focusing distance with a wide angle lens, ultra wide angle lens. And you can clearly see that the Nikon is not doing good in this situation and we cannot focus as closely as we can with the iPhone but it's a little bit off in terms of white balance but when we step further a little bit and we get the picture in focus with the Nikon we see a lot of background blur and bokeh and it's looking really outstanding comparing to the iPhone's pretty flat picture. Also, I have compared the iPhone 12 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max and the Nikon with 2.8 lenses in low light situation and you'll be guessing which one is which in a separate video guys so stay tuned for that low light is to another video it's a big topic and then i just zoomed in with this lens the same lens to 26 millimeter and now we get the same jpeg situation where we have low dynamic range of the jpegs and not enough information in the sky basically and you can clearly see that the picture pops a little more with the 13 pro max and overall sharpness is also seems to be better on the 13 pro max maybe it's digital sharpness and if we work a little bit with the jpeg of the nikon in lightroom for instance we can raise up or lower down the sharpness but overall the picture straight away from the camera is looking better with the 13 pro max and here we have the minimal focus and distance with the main camera and the real blur the physical blur of this camera not a portrait mode on the 13 pro max and we can clearly see that the nikon is just destroying this iphone in terms of bokeh and background blur uh, of course it is better with the digital full frame slr camera but overall the picture on the 13 pro max looks good except for the halos on the trees right there in the left top corner of the picture and now let's get to the portrait pictures and uh, without portrait modes on the iphone 13 pro max we get pretty flat picture quality i could have uh, exposed the nikon better a little bit but still it's looking better than the iphones in this case but when we switch on the portrait mode the situation flips and we can see that right now the picture from the iphone just pops more and straight away from the camera i would prefer the iphone's picture in the portrait mode we even get good separation from the background and artificial blur without any issues even close to the head and the hair and the background is kind of busy and it's a pretty tough thing to make to a phone but it's doing a good job when we step a little further and we take a full height portrait with a portrait mode it also looks pretty good to my eye and it's really comparable and it's sharp and it pops so i really enjoyed using this mode and the portrait mode overall and you can see that even in this case we get pretty good separation from the background right here. This is how the picture looks when we get the telephoto 77 millimeter shot without portrait mode. 
And here is when we step a little closer, you can see that the Nikon is looking much better, like a ton better. But then we switch to the portrait mode with a telephoto lens. And guys, it's looking even better to my eye. The colors are better, it pops more, and the background separation is good. And overall, the Nikon's JPEG versus this picture, I would prefer the iPhones once again. Of course, Nikon wins in this situation with the buildings. We have less more and aliasing, less digital sharpness in Nikon, and overall better picture quality at f4 with a 24 to 70 lens. In this picture, we can once again see this little house, and overall, I like the Nikon's picture more. It's not that flat as the iPhone's picture. On the brick wall, we can see that the iPhone is kind of a little more sharp and has more detail and more micro contrast. And on this close-up, we can see a lot more blur with the Nikon, but overall pretty comparable sharpness with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but I would definitely prefer the Nikon close-up. And then I switched to this Nikkor 105 micro or macro <laughs> lens, f2.8 G, and it's one-to-one -one ratio, reproduction ratio of the macro. And here is the comparison with the ultra-wide lens of iPhone 13 Pro Max, and it's focusing closer than one-to-one -one macro on the full-frame camera, basically. So I'll be making a separate macro comparison of this phone and this lens and camera, so stay tuned for that. And I've been talking about JPEGs, and now let's talk about RAW. Both RAW pictures are pretty easy, color gradable and color correct, color correctable, <laughs> tough word, color correctable. And we can see that they are kind of identical. We can see the sky right now on the Nikon's picture. It's a processed raw picture. And uh, the sharpness is a tiny bit better on the iPhone, but maybe it's because of the digital sharpness built into the iPhone. On the buildings, we can see that the Nikon is doing a much better job with less sharpness right there. I mean, digital sharpness. And on the picture with the skin tone, we can see the difference in skin tone and colors overall. But I can say that I definitely like those colors on both pictures. And uh, the sharpness on the iPhone is a tiny bit better, at least in this picture. Maybe it's a little misfocused on the Nikon. But I definitely enjoyed both pictures and both RAWs. But the benefit of the iPhone is that it provides you with good results straight away when the Nikon shoots in JPEG. Mm -hmm. But in RAW, it's much better quality, of course, but you have to process this RAW. And here you have it in your pocket all the time, kind of pre-processed for you. So guys, what are your thoughts? Is the iPhone 13 Pro Max close enough to the Nikon than full-frame DSLRs or mirrorless, mirrorless cameras? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Also, if you did enjoy this video, smash the like and subscribe buttons, as I say in my videos. Thank you very much for watching, guys. My name is Oleg Nikitin from Russia with Love. Here is my Instagram. Here are a few videos for you to watch next. And I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.